Well, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. It looks like we might have a couple more people jumping on. So good morning, Fathomers. I'm going to introduce you to Simon. Um, you can hear he has a wonderful accent from the <laughs> British Isles. And then he permitted, his permit lit home is in Hawaii, as you guys can hear, right there in the devastation. But right now he's living in Brazil. So he's a world traveler. Um, but Simon came on with me, um, supporting me in kind of lead generation also transitioning those, I think how I worded it is from that click to that appointment. He is an expert in all things. And so we've just been talking and I'm like, can you just give some of my agents some tidbits on what is working, what's not working, um, and just how to help us transition? Because sometimes we can get that first lead, even if it's not even a click of an internet lead or just that lead that somebody referred to us. Like, how can we go through it and how can we maximize that connection? to be able to get it to that appointment and work through it. And so he's going to give us some lots of tons of information. He actually gave me the little sneak peek of it. So I'm really excited for you guys um, to be able to get in it. And then at the end, he's going to have questions and answers. So um, like I said, he is like the Elon Musk of lead generation and conversion is how I call it. So I love that. I'm going to steal that. Just <laughs> <laughs> a camp from Silicon Valley. So um I love people that are brilliant in their fields and definitely that is Simon. So I will let you take it away, Simon. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. No, I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I'm very grateful uh, for the, the opportunity, just a chance to dig in. Um, I want to make this session like the best session you've ever, ever had on lead conversion. So I'm going to share some slides. So if you can enable that. And while we're doing that, I'm going to want to uh, ask a lot of questions through this uh, because to me, the best sessions when you learn the most, and this is from my own experience as well, are the ones that are most interactive where we actually, you ask questions, we get, you know, I'm going to ask you some questions as well, and we'll make it as interactive as possible. I know quite a few people will be watching the recording as well, um, but hopefully we can keep it uh, interactive and we will have a QA. and a And if you do have a question throughout this, don't need to wait until the end. Uh, literally just jump in and ask me. And I do have sharing rights now, so uh, we're all set. What are we going to cover in this section? Um, well, obviously the world of online lead generation is one that is constantly, constantly changing. And so what worked in our last year is not working necessarily this year, but there's a few things that carry on and remain the same. So what are we going to cover today? So the objectives that I have for this uh, session today is really going to tell you, like dig in in detail, what does it take to actually convert online leads in 2023, right? Um, so that's number one. We're going to go through a whole list of things like submarine selling, this concept of uh, submarine selling that I've actually brought from the tech world in tech sales that has been very, very helpful to a lot of the people that I've shared it with. We're going to look at how to map your message to the place that your clients, your potential clients are at in their buying journey or their selling journey as well. Um, the importance of consistency, everybody knows that. I know I'm not going to be the first to tell you, but some actual hacks that uh, will help you to improve the level of consistency because that is absolutely key. Um, we're going to look at some of the real world data behind lead gen. And this is not just data that I pulled out uh, you know, from, from the internet. This is actually data from my business where we're helping uh, large uh, brokerage teams and solo agents with online lead gen. Uh, we're also going to take a look at how to leverage video for nurture and some tips and tricks, some things that can actually simplify uh, the overwhelming and daunting task of actually getting the hang of video, not just you know, starting something like a YouTube channel, but how do you use video in your actual nurture as well? We're gonna look at how to use ChatGPT to actually 10X your content production as well, to simplify that as well. Um, so very a lot of packed information here uh, hopefully is going to be uh, valuable so i encourage you to take a lot of notes uh, and get your questions ready as well we are going to have q a um so make sure that you have some questions and uh, we'll spend plenty of time on that okay all right so uh with that a little bit about me like why am i here talking to you about this like who am i uh why why, why should i be sharing this information so i've actually been in technical sales for about 24 years um i was a programmer for many years i've led technical sales teams 
Uh, I've helped multiple businesses scale to seven figures. Uh, this is uh, a picture of me here. I uh, was fortunate enough to actually um, help taking a $1.5 billion tech company public. Uh, that was when we IPO'd on the New York Stock Exchange. Very, very cool experience uh, that I was lucky to go through. And I've been helping businesses scale uh, since 2017 with online lead gen. Um, so this is a space that I love. Um, and the reason I love it is because it's really at the intersection between three things that I'm passionate about. One is marketing, the other is sales, and the other is tech. And lead conversion is right in the middle of that. Uh, and it's there because you need to have the automation. You have to have the direct response style emotional appeal that marketing does. And you still have to have the sales acumen to be able to get the appointment and to be able to convert them into a lead as well. So this is where I am in my happy place and uh, something I'm super passionate about. So I'm gonna start with a question and I want you all to just think about the last time that you actually had to go and find a stranger online to help you with something. It could have been a, uh, you know, you needed some repairs in your house. It, I mean, obviously you're not gonna be reaching out for a realtor, but uh, you could have been reaching out for, you know, a, a remodel, uh, for example, or it could have been something you're just looking on Yelp or Google to find somebody to help you, uh, or you're buying a course maybe. And think about what were the factors that really helped you to build trust in that person, that helped that person gain your trust so that you could actually connect? Because everybody agrees, right, without the trust, you have no chance, right? You're not going to connect. You're not going to give that person a call. So think about some of the factors and just type in the chat here for me. What are some of the factors that really helped you to actually build that trust? So just name a few out here. I'm going to monitor the chat. As I said, we're going to responsiveness. Uh, Carrie uh, chimed in with this responsiveness, knowledge, con confidence in them uh, built quickly. Yeah, absolutely. So how quick they were to respond to you as a potential lead, how knowledgeable they were about their subject matter, right? Some of the things that you say in the first 10, 15 seconds, even less, uh, can really help to build that quick picture of, do you actually know what you're talking about? Any Anything that you found uh, when you were searching online as well? So before you even had that conversation, what are some of the other things that you may have noticed? Like you're searching on Google, what are you looking for? Reviews, reviews, okay. So Danica said, uh, I hope I got that right, Danica. Uh, reviews and online presence, absolutely. Yeah, and and you know the confidence in online reviews has dropped quite a bit, uh, right? Because everybody's heard of being able to pay for reviews and things like that. So, and also everybody focuses on the one review uh, that's bad, right? So that draws a lot of attention. So authority and trust online, it takes um, some work, right? Making sure that you've got reviews in the right places, that they're actually very real looking reviews, that they're verified as well. All these are basically trust signals that can really help make the difference. Um, and when people turn up on a call, you can feel their level or lack of trust and skepticism when they're on that call. And so all these things make a big difference. Online presence, that's another big one, making sure that you have, uh, you, you know, that your Zillow profile is fully up to date, right? That you're showing up on realtor.com, for example, on the right places. That, I mean, the amount of profiles that I look in and look at any day uh, with uh, people who've been in business 15, 20, 25 years, and their website's broken, their social profiles, links don't work from Zillow. Uh, like even just the basics of getting things in place so that when somebody goes and finds you online, because let's face it, everybody is looking online these days. I know that you still have your sphere and you're working that, you still have you know, a lot of people that you may be meeting in person, but since the pandemic, I think everybody can agree, it's become way, way more digital, right? So. The idea that you would look up your name, like if you've ever, if you've not Googled yourself, by the way, make sure you Google yourself and see, do you come up and give Google my business, right? Can I, can you find your Zillow listing, uh, your Zillow profile? Is it up to date? Does your website work? All these basics, it's amazing to me how many, uh, you know, experienced realtors don't even have the basics in place or they put it in while a while ago and then they haven't fixed it. So make sure that people can find you and make, make sure that that process is gonna feel like a solid experience for them because 
all of those are trust signals that they're recording in their mind. So moving on from this, I think a big picture um, of like zooming out and thinking about the home buying journey. A lot of people um, actually don't spend a lot of time thinking about this. And the journey and where people are at on that journey is really, really important because you've got to be able to meet your uh, potential client exactly where they're at in the buying process or, the, or something. Just uh, let's call it their journey, right? And online lead gen um, plays in a space that is uh, a different parts in this journey. And the, depending on the type of online lead gen that you're talking about, uh, will be intercepting people at a different stage in their journey than perhaps you may be used to. And if you don't adapt your messaging to where they're at, um, that's the one of the biggest, apart from the basics of, you know, following up consistently and having a really strong online presence. This is the biggest mistake that I see uh, being made is where um, the way that you're, the expectations that you have of where this person's going to be at in their journey will be different to where they're feeling that they are, they're at in their journey. And so if you've ever worked with, um, you know, uh, Zillow leads, for example, you know, they're some of the most expensive leads in the business. Um, they do tend to be a little bit closer to the actual point of getting out and seeing properties, which is why they often cost a bit more. Um, so there's more work has been done either by the, the person themselves or by some of these platforms to get them to that point. But when you're looking at Facebook, for example, or you're looking at Google PPC, they tend to be a little bit earlier in that process. Now that can be really good because you're intercepting, you're potentially intercepting that person and connecting with them earlier in the process. So yes, it can take a bit more work, but it means you have a much better opportunity to actually build that relationship with them so that you can guide them through that process. But in order to do that, you've got to be able to match your messaging to the kinds of feelings that they're having and what they're expecting. So if we take a look at this, right, when, when you, let's say that you've got a lead coming in, first thing you need to know is where did it come from and what kind of source are we talking about here? Because you're going to treat a lead that is, you know, very close, like if they're coming in for a property valuation, for example, and they're coming through a referral, you're going to message and, and talk to and connect with that kind of person very differently from somebody who is probably a year out. They haven't really yet uh, kind of made up their mind about which areas or what their budget is. They just started talking to their partner about maybe these can still be great leads to build a relationship with. And actually, a lot of uh, a lot of agents I see out there will will not spend time on leads like that and miss out on the opportunity that, to build that relationship early um, because it does take work. I get that. So, for example, somebody at this early stage. Maybe they're feeling scared, right? They're uncertain. Maybe they have to sell. I mean, this is the big thing we're finding in this market right now is there are, because of the interest rate rises that have happened because of the market situation, it is getting harder. Like a lot of people are kind of on pause, right? They're holding off and they're saying, mm, maybe I'm going to wait and see and watch. Um, so a lot of education is needed, but also a lot of volume to still be able to find the people who have to move, the people who may have just inherited a house, right? The people who are going through a divorce, the people who still need that help, they just have to move for a job, they've got no choice. Yes, they're worried about the mortgage rates, but they've got to do it anyway. And the only way you're going to connect with people like that is to have the volume, is to make sure that you're doing the level of outreach that's required to connect with them because they are still out there. Um, but they may be scared, uncertain, they don't want to commit just yet. They ver they're very, very wary. We see a lot of this, very wary about pressure, right? Don't want to be pressured or, you know, and, and there's a, there is still a perception out there that if they connect with a realtor, even an experienced realtor, there's going to be some pressure there. There's going to be like, come on, come on, you've got to. And, and so it's really important to make sure that in your messaging, the way you connect with them, the messages you send, what you're saying is you're bursting that pressure bubble. And people understand that you are there to help. You are genuinely there for education to help and support them, right? You want to meet face-to-face -face as much as possible in that early. So, I mean, it's amazing 
if you have a call and you can get a face-to-face, -face, the extent that you're going to be able to build rapport is obviously going to increase a lot, right? Um, in the middle, around this wants and needs, somebody's got a better idea of the price range and style, they're still maybe deciding on some of the specifics. Uh, and, and I think everybody knows people can stick here for a very long time. So that's why this is a long game, right? Nurture is a long game, which is why we have automation and we need to have these consistent touch points in place. And people are very used now to automated uh, follow up. There's a lot of discussion about AI, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later, because I know that it can reduce the amount of effort and it can help in those touch points. However, there's a big problem with AI, uh, and that is that if you are trying to build a relationship using AI, I can tell you that despite what some of the big AI companies will tell you about, oh, only 1% of our leads even notice that it's AI. Uh, people are getting much wiser to this right now. And think about your own experiences. Aren't you on the hunt to detect if it's a real human being that you're talking to? Like nobody wants to talk to a bot. No one wants to talk to a bot unless they absolutely have to, right? So it can have some benefits, but we, I mean, I would tell you from my own experience, my own business, we believe in the power of human touch. And yes, you can use automation, but that personalized touch still goes a long way and it's worth putting in the time for. And there are ways that you can make it more scalable. And we'll talk about video and content and things like that. So what do you, how should you communicate in this section? You're educating still, maybe focusing some of the, on, the, on some of the homes and some of the obstacles that are getting in the way, right? Do they need help on the financing side? Do they need um, you know, help with a lender intro as well? We do a lot of lender intros. And then obviously once they're ready, it's go, 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 right? At that point, it's making sure you're super, super responsive, um, you know, and, and that's the point that I think many of you will be much more used to is getting that, that point at which you just all about getting, uh, clarifying the pros and cons, knocking down the remaining obstacles, getting them into contract. So, you know, maybe this is a, a more comfortable place on the right hand side and where you want to be spending your time, um, but you don't get to do that if we're not putting up the work in the work up front to build those relationships earlier on. Is this all making sense so far? Can you give me a, give me a thumbs up or uh, anything in the chat? Everything coming through? Good, good. I see a thumbs up there, thank you. So I told you about submarine selling before. What is this concept? So if anybody's gone through, I mean, I've gone through more selling methodologies in my career than I can count. Um, and all of them come at the problem slightly differently, but this is something from Sandler Selling, um, which is very popular in the tech space. And um, it's something that I have found super helpful in my, my career personally, and it gets you, a, it, it does, definitely increases the chances that you've got to build relationships and actually con convert leads. And the concept is this, in a submarine, right? If you imagine a missile potentially hitting a submarine or some sort of leak or any issue that's going to bring water in, the way that a submarine is designed is compartmentalized, right? Every single compartment is watertight. And the reason that they do that is because if one part of the submarine is compromised, then you're still going to survive, right? The idea is that you shut those compartments off. Now, the way that that translates into selling and to building these relationships is you never leapfrog. You can never jump from one section of the submarine to another. You have to go door to door, right? And that means that when you're busy building bonding and rapport at the beginning, you're building that rapport, you can't jump into budget, for example, or you can't jump into the decision-making process before you've earned the right by building that rapport at the beginning, right? So you wanna think about breaking down your conversation. And the way that I think about this in marketing terms is, I only ever have the job of getting the person I'm working with to the next step. That's my only focus, right? So I'm not thinking about, you know, if I'm, if I'm getting an appointment, I'm not thinking about getting them under contract. I'm not thinking about the houses that they're looking for. I'm just thinking about how do I get them to the next stage in the process? And that really changes the way that you will talk to and build like the types of things you'll be asking about and then the next commitment that you want to make 
is going to be different. For example, if I'm just trying to get a call with you, I'm going to talk to you differently about that than I am if I'm trying to get a face-to-face -face meeting, right? And the, that goes all the way through this process. So think about this as a way of, like, just remember it as a rule. You can never jump from one compartment to a, another. So make sure you understand which compartment you're in and just focus on getting them to the next step. That helps a lot. It, it really can improve your conversion rates. So consistency, you've heard it a million times. Well, here's some data to actually show uh, this was a study done back in 2013, actually. Um, and there's quite a few different studies that have been done like this. But just to give you a, a sense of the opportunity that's out there for people who are able to put the consistency in. And I do know that entire businesses have been creating, including mine, because of the challenge of consistency, right? I mean, one of the things that we do a lot is solve this problem. But if you're willing to put the work in, you can be comforted in the fact that most people alongside you are gonna give up a lot earlier, right? Look at this, 89% of salespeople have given up by contact number four. Most of the appointments that we book in LeadRise come at the sixth or seventh call, right? And that's not just the touch points. The touch points themselves can be usually about 12 to 14 touch points before we even make contact, right? So these are emails, texts, phone calls. And we'll talk about some ways to make uh, some of that easier. But this is, I find this motivating uh, because I remember that most people aren't going to put the work in, right? And that if, they, if everybody did, honestly, I wouldn't have a business uh, and you wouldn't be able to be a real realtor, right? You, you've got to have uh, that, that consistency definitely sets you apart. Here's some stats for you. Now, I said at the beginning that I wouldn't just pull out uh, stats from the internet. So these are real world stats from our business. And just to give you a sense of what it actually takes in this market right now, and this is just to secure the appointment, okay? So on average, we have an ISA team, so inside sales agents who are making all the calls, right? So on average, you'll find even professional ISA teams are around a 4% lead to appointment conversion rate, right? So that means that, you know, for, it would be on average uh, about 20 appointments uh, will get, sorry, 20 leads will get them one appointment, right? We're at a minimum around six to 7%. We've had clients that are upwards of 15% in some cases as well. So it can get much higher, but that's just to give you a sense of once you've removed even the bad phone numbers and they usually be about 10 to 20% uh, of online lead gen is going to have dummy data, dummy phone numbers. They put in a landline. You can't get through to them. Um, once you've removed that, so I'm just talking about cleaned leads, then on average, it's going to be 15 leads to get a single appointment. So yes, that's a lot of no's. I was just looking. Don't contact me again. Please leave me alone. And then a great conversation that leads to an appointment. The other thing I mentioned is touch points, eight to 14 touch points. So, you know, normally we're sending out uh, value-based emails. And I'm going to talk a little bit more later about how video can really help and how to actually use video to really stand out uh, and stand out from the crowd here. So eight to 14 touch points, again, just to get the appointment, right? Or even just to get the call sometimes. And then on average, eight calls per lead. So we'll be making like one ISA on our team will make on average 100 to 150 calls in a day, right? Maybe they're booking in one day, four to five appointments. It's a lot of calls uh, and you've got to have systems in place to make sure that these things happen. Then once you've got the appointment, then thinking about actually getting to conversion. So what does that look like? Well, on average, uh, 65 to 75% show rate so in this day and age, you know, it's, it is hard to get people to show up. And there's a lot of different things that uh, we do in order to make that happen. So things like using video to actually put a, a face to a name and show some value early on, uh, remove that pressure bubble, all those sorts of things can help with your show rate, um, as well as your online presence, your reviews, like did you do something valuable for them before they even turned up to the appointment? Um, because if you do, they're going to remember you, right? Um, so then that's the show rate. So let's say 75% of the appointments that you book actually show. 
Then what does the conversion look like? Well, this is where your rapport building and sales skills really start to shine. And we see a, a, a big variety of conversion rates at this place. So absolute best in class, I would say, is, is a two to one ratio. So for two appointments that you get, you're going to get one client from that, right? Actually get them under contract. Great is three to one. Most agents that, uh, you know, from the data that I've seen are really around a five to one. And what this really means is there's room for improvement. There's room to better the conversion rate by figuring out some of these trust signals, figuring out a few of the hooks that you can use using things like submarine selling. So you're only trying to focus on getting them to the next step and using things like video nurture to build trust ahead of you even meeting them. Who's tracking with me? Everybody still with me? Yeah? Awesome. Just tell me, is, is this is this valuable so far? Is this helping? Just give me some signals in the chat here. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Love it. All right. I'll keep going. Just to finish off this piece, okay, for consistency, a few of the things that I've found really help because it's hard, right? I know it's hard. Using an accountability partner, right? Somebody, maybe it's your colleague, maybe it's a friend, like somebody you can have a calendar, uh, like an event with once a week and they're going to run down and they're going to ask you okay how many people did you not manage to connect with or did you manage to connect with they're going to ask you just a few quick fire questions and you do the same for them you can make it mutual right we have this thing in our slack channel uh where we we have a lot of kpis and reporting to hold ourselves accountable so every single day we can see whether we've made enough calls whether we got whether we hit our KPI of calling every lead within three to five minutes. So we know on the team who is making it, and who is not, who is behind. And for any day that we don't book an appointment, we have this picture of a crying baby uh, that we put in the Slack channel. And it's just fun things like this um, that remind us you've got to be accountable every single day. Um, that's the only way that it works with consistency. So I would encourage you to find an accountability partner uh, also try and use systems as much as you can. So yes, if you can have um, uh, an automated touch point, like a text message going out, or you use, uh, you know, you save some of the text messages, the messages that you send out most consistently, all these little things will help make it easier for you to quickly follow up without having to rethink it every time. The other thing that I've personally found, and this has been throughout my career, like Blocking time out each day, uh, whether it's a 60 or a 90 minute block, and you batch all your follow up. So you do it all in that one section, right? That can really help so that you're not task switching all the time. A big thing I, I see that's draining for everybody is interruption. You're constantly being interrupted, you're switching into different contexts, you're trying to manage too many things blocking that time during the day and then just you know make sure you can't be contacted make sure there's i mean even going on to uh onto google and get a chrome plugin to disable facebook get a chrome plugin to disable instagram so you can't see those feeds you can't go surfing during that 90 minute period the only thing that will work is your crm the only thing that will work is your phone so you can actually send follow-up texts these are things that uh, will really help um, improve your consistency of follow-up. So video, I'm going to ask you a question. Just put, uh, uh, type in the chat if you are currently using video nurture or you have a YouTube channel or you're doing anything consistently with video today. Just give me a, a yes in the chat. I see a no. Okay. Thanks, Sandra. No. Open houses. Okay. Kara's doing open houses. Awesome. Yeah. And is that on YouTube, Carrie? You're doing that? I'm assuming it is. Um, okay. So I think a lot of people don't uh, love on Facebook. Yeah. Live on Facebook. Yeah. That makes sense. So a lot of people still are not doing video. And this is good news because it means it is still blue ocean territory, right? It won't be for long. Like if we're doing this again, uh, next year, same time next year, I think a lot of realtors are going to start picking up. A lot of people are going to get the hang of this. And I'm seeing a lot of people really start to dig in deep to do this. Um, so why don't people do it, even though that they know it's important? 
I'm going to go through some of that because I know what the objections are because I hear them all the time. And I'm going to do my best to remove as many of these objections so that by the end of this, you feel like, actually, yes, I can start using video because I tell you it works. So, um, you know, we're going to talk about why it's why it's hard, you know, but why it's important. What equipment do you need? What do you talk about? What order you should do them, them in? And like, how do you actually get hang of this without feeling like you need to be the U next YouTube uh, superstar, right? It's very hard. I, I get it. Um, but why is this so important? Well, we talked about building authority online before. If, imagine that you're reaching out to somebody, like you, you said before, you're reaching out to get some help with something online. And what do you do, right? Think about just today or yesterday. How many YouTube videos did you watch? How many videos did you watch on Facebook? Who do you trust a little bit more today than you did yesterday because you watched a video that they did and they did a really, really good job and it made you want to actually contact them or work with them or maybe just trust them a bit more, right? There's a huge amount of authority that's being built out there because People are really digging in, making great quality content. And sometimes it's not even that, right? Sometimes it's even just a quick 60 second or even 30 second video just to show that you're not a five headed monster, uh, you know, that you are actually a real person and you care and you're showing up and you want to meet with them, right? Even things like that can make a big difference. So it's a way to stand out and be remembered, a way to bring your personality out, which is Ultimately, what helps you actually book, uh, not book appointments, but convert appointments into clients, you got into this, I'm assuming, many of you, because you love building relationships and you enjoy people. And uh, that's what I hear a lot. And, and so letting your character come through the video can be a great way to help you build that rapport. And then the third thing is, this is time sensitive. It won't be as easy to use and stand out with video as it is right now in a year's time. It just won't. Right. So better to get in now and get the hang of it. You don't need a expensive, complicated YouTube studio set up with great lighting and all of this kit. You just don't need that. Mobile is the way to go. You've already got your phone. You've already got a great camera. And so all you really need is a way to put the camera in a tripod if you'd rather than holding it. But even that you don't really need. You can even just hold the camera, um, hold the phone. And you just need a mic, right? So I will tell you, audio quality with video is very, 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 very important. Um, even just to show you here, right? If I was to switch, so I, I have this, um, you won't be able to see this, but it's a snowball, right? This is my mic. Um, if I switch my uh, switch my snowball, I'm going to go to just a normal microphone on my computer here, right? Let me see if I can switch this. Okay, so you can hear the difference now. Can you hear the difference in quality? That is something that people, unfortunately, will not forgive when it comes to video. Uh, we'll actually forgive. I'll switch back to my snowball. We'll forgive. Uh, video quality being bad before we'll forgive audio quality being bad. So if there's anything that you need to invest in beyond your phone, it's actually having a decent mic, right? That's number one. Yes, you need to get your, you know, make sure your lighting's okay, things like that. But that's actually pretty easy with the phones these days. They're so good at, um, you know, making sure that the lighting's okay, that you don't really need to worry about that. The main thing is get a good mic. And you can pick these up. Uh, basically, you could just go and search on Amazon. Uh, it's called a lavalier mic. And you just basically, it's Bluetooth. Uh, and you can get one for like $20, $30. You stick it uh, here, and you're going to be able to then run freely and move around, um, even if you're out and about, right? And so you can. that means you can hold the, the phone with the selfie stick. Uh, you can talk into it. And if you want to put it on, uh, you want to actually put it so you can get these little tripods where like a, it's called a Joby uh, tripod. I don't have one here, but it's kind of kind of like the tripod here, but it's actually bendable. And so you could like, if there was a fence or a gate or a wall, you can just wrap it around that. And then you've got your Bluetooth uh, lavalier mic that allows you to move around. 
So you can put your phone in position, hit record and be in front of a house, a property that you actually want to talk about. And you can just start presenting right into your camera. Just talk as if the person was in front of you, right? Super, super easy, doesn't need to be complicated and you can find these things online. So like that's one excuse, bubble burst, okay? Move on to another one. What are the best opportunities, right? So think about, a lot of people get worried about like, well, when should I use video, right? When should I actually do this? I don't wanna do a big YouTube channel. I'm not ready for that. I just wanna start using it here and there. Well, the first thing that we use it for is getting an intro to a new lead. So the first time a lead comes in, the best thing you can do, if you don't have Bomb Bomb or Loom or anything like that, go and sign up for one of these. It's usually most people I meet have already got an account and you use your webcam or you can even record it on your phone. And all you do is you're just going to record a quick video saying, Hey, Simon, thanks very much for signing up. Um, take a look at the website. You know, it's just really super simple. And you're just saying hi. And you send that as a bomb bomb uh, or a loom. And I can tell you, if you embed it, make sure that you embed the thumbnail, the animated GIF. So if you go into loom or bomb bomb, they all do this. They allow you to copy uh, a GIF that they create that shows the first few moments of moving. And that has a much higher conversion rate because people are like, oh, that, that's actually, and they just click. They're more likely to click. Another really good tip that's helped a lot, get a little whiteboard, get a black marker and put the name of the lead on. Just put hi, so if it was me, right? Hi, Simon, just put that on, your, uh, on the whiteboard, put it in the camera and just start like that at the beginning of the video. So you, that's what they're going to see when they look at the um, the animated GIF. They're going to see their own name. They're like, oh, this is this is a video they did for me. It's not just some stock video that they send to everybody. Again, the more that you personalize, the more chances you've got of actually connecting with people and building that rapport. Second thing is, instead of sending another boring info, like an email, like a follow-up email, you've just met with somebody in person, right? You've just, um, you just did a listing presentation. You just, you had a, any sort of touch point that uh, you would normally send an email to. Instead, just do a really quick personal video. Again, on Bomb Bomb and Loom. Hey, Simon, it's great to meet you today. Hope the info is useful. I'm thinking about this, this, and this next. Let's connect next Tuesday. Hope you have a great day. Just, it's super simple. Don't need to overcomplicate it. You don't need a script either. These are just ways to keep top of mind in front of people online. And the third is, this is where the long form content comes in. This is where you can really start to build a name for yourself in your, in your market by thinking about education. And the, uh, the great thing about these types of video is they're ever, evergreen. So here are a few, before I get into this, actually, um, there's a few examples. These are a couple of clients of ours um, you know, have been doing some great videos. These are just super simple, bomb bomb, you know, putting a face to a name. If you want to get some more examples, there's actually a QR code on the left-hand side here, bottom left. You can actually just scan that um, and it will take you straight to bomb bomb's website. It's not ours. There's no opt-in required. And on there, there's a load of different uh, videos that will show you how people are using this in their nurture, okay? Um, there's a question that came up from Britt here. I have... I've had people just text me a video, thoughts on that. So text is, text is tricky. And the reason is because there's a lot more regulation that's coming in on text uh, now. So uh, for example, for, for all, uh, anybody who's actually sending out texts, even with an opt-in, you have to get registered for what's called A2P certification. So you actually have to register your company and your brand with the telco providers. Uh, in order for you to not get uh, classed as spam. So regulations coming in pretty tight this year. Uh, we've actually had to, reg we've registered all of our clients for A2P because we've seen the response rates start to get throttled. Now, I will tell you that right now they are still focusing on mass spamming texts. Like, so if you're going to try and send 500 texts in a day to people you've never had an opt-in, that's who they're trying to crack down on first. So if you're sending a link from your phone, for now, you are probably going to get that uh, through. 
The, the problem that I found with, with, with text, and it is definitely worth trying, is depends on which phone that they use as to whether they're just going to see a link without the preview or they're going to actually see the embedded animated GIF. And I'll tell you, if it's just a link, most people don't click it because why? We've all been trained to be very skeptical of text links that we see, especially in a text, right? If you get a text through and you see a link, most of the time you're like, I'm not going to click that. I just don't know what's going to happen. So I would say if you're going to text, fine, do it, but also send the email and embed it in the email. That way you've got a better chance of actually connecting with people if they don't trust the link in the text, okay? And if, and if there is a way for you to send embedded, that's also good. So I talked about evergreen education, right? Yes, there is more work to be done here, but I can tell you this is where the superstars of the online real estate world are being made is in the people that are taking the time to figure out what problems people are actually trying to solve. And a lot, I mean, actually, you don't even need to figure them out because I can tell you what they are, <laughs> but they're very, very consistent. Every single time we go to a different state, different city, it's the same thing, right? So you don't even have to re-engineer or reinvent the wheel here, but doing education get, gives you a chance to really build your authority in a way that honestly, um, if you're not doing this, you're going to get left behind. And that's the thing. So what are some of the things that you can do? And I, actually, just before I go into that, I'll tell you, like, I've seen so many uh, case studies at this point of, for example, people, brand new realtors who literally are three months in with their license, go into a new city that they've just moved to. And because they were consistently putting educational videos out there for three to six months straight, and they focused on it, they ended up eventually having a couple of videos that really started to rank. And then they get they start getting consistent lead gen from it. And you can create, there's still ways to create a name for yourself if you're willing to put in the work. But it doesn't happen overnight. And this is the thing that I think people find most difficult, right? If you're going to do this, you've got to commit to it. I would say for 12 months, right? Make that commitment and say, okay, I am going to try doing this and I'm going to consistently do it independent of the results that I get from it. And I'm going to do one video, let's say one video every two weeks, right? To keep it as easy as possible. And you're going to do that until this date next year. And then you're going to take a look at the results. Because if you're not willing to do that, most people get into it. They do it for three months. They post three videos and they go, nobody, no, I didn't close any deals from it. And then they give up. And the truth is, if you've got that kind of mindset with this, it, it's not going to work, right? This, is, this does take longer, but it is hugely impactful to your business when it's done right. And there's so much help out there for this. Like I'll give a shout out to Mike Sherrard, who probably most of you will be familiar with. Uh, I think he's, Mike's got some fantastic content. Uh, he can really, like even his free content will really help you uh, get a lot further with your video. So pay attention to people like him, follow him on YouTube and you'll learn a lot, right? So what do you actually produce videos about? Well, you don't even have to reinvent the wheel here. I'm telling you that we've done our research and I've pulled this from a lot of people who really, really know what they're doing and have had great success on YouTube. These are the topics that you need to be posting about. So you can snapshot this and that literally should be where you start. You don't even need to do a huge amount of research. So yes, there is a place for market updates. I would tell you that you want to uh, make them as personal as possible. And this is a big place where I see people failing with market updates is they automate them completely. They just get them the, uh, the IDX or the property um, search website to send this out automatically. And when there's no personal touch, People just take a quick glance and they ignore it, right? It's the same reason that they ignore automated home valuations. People don't pay much attention to them because they know there's no person behind it, right? So you getting on camera once a month and saying, hey, this is what's happening in my area. And you're just going through some of the most notable updates in the MLS, right? This is the most expensive property that sold in our area this month. Let's take a quick look at it online, right? You can do things like that in a, in a video where it doesn't take a lot of thought, right? You already know what's going on in the market. 
So just have three or four key facts, show some core cool properties and make sure that they understand that you have the pulse on what's happening in your market. So those are great videos. Another one is relocation videos, right? If you pick five things that they need to know, and you can also do the negative side of this as well, like don't move to Colorado Springs before you know, before you watch this video. I'm gonna tell you five things that I wish I'd known before I moved here, or five things that people I've helped move here have told me they wish they knew before. Things like that, you know, it can really prompt the curiosity level and people are more likely to engage with it. Um, I'll go, I'll just speed up a little bit because I want to leave time for questions. But, you know, any one of these, like what are the pros and cons? And you can go super niche as well, right? Don't be afraid to maybe take an area that you know really, really well and just focus on that area, right? Um, so it might be one where it's, you know, there's a lot of people who have moved from other states, uh, or it might be one where there's certain nuances to the property. Like, for example, I, I saw this done in Hawaii. The whole pros and cons was actually things that you don't need, you don't know exist in Hawaii, that like doing um, a survey of potential uh, exposure to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, like that's something you have to think about in Maui or, or, or in Hawaii. Getting really niche on your area um, will help you really start to rank a lot better. Now, I won't go, there's not enough time to go through all the detail of how to uh, how to actually start the YouTube channel. What I'll tell you is go to Mike Sherrard. I would recommend him. Uh, he's probably, I think, one of the best that's out there right now. Take a look at his tips of getting started. He has a course out there as well. The other thing I'll tell you is tricks that I've really found help. I actually bought this um, teleprompter. Uh, and if anybody's interested, let me know and I'll send you the link. It's a small teleprompter. Uh, it just, your mobile phone goes behind it and you can actually read a script while you're looking directly into the camera. So there's some, and that was $30, very, very well spent. Um, so there's things like that, that can, as you get into this, can really help as well. Carrie, yeah, I'll make sure that I get those links over to you. Uh, awesome, definitely. And anybody else who's interested, just let me know. Um, I can give my email at the end and just shoot me a message. So chat GPT, everybody has heard about it. Just um. Type in the chat, anybody using ChatGPT already for anything, content production, uh, emails, scripts, give me a yes or a no. Nope, okay. Yes, for captions, Danica's using it for captions, yeah. I've seen a lot of people actually using this for property listing descriptions as well, and really dialing in their prompts for things like that, captions, um, Bernie, yes, I'll definitely send you the teleprompter in info. No worries. There is such a thing now as prompt engineering. This is kind of the future of where programming and development and copywriting is going. We're kind of, I mean, in my space, we're kind of turning into AI, AI charmers, people who really understand how to use AI. And you may have heard this said before, AI is not what is the biggest threat. AI is not going to replace people. People that use AI are going to replace people that don't. And the gap is widening in a really, really very, very, very rapidly. So, and the reason is like, it's a, such a productivity boost. If you can figure out how to get good at this, now's the time to do it. And it's actually not as hard as you might think. So the simple way to think about this is the quality of your output is always going to be dependent on the quality of your input. And that's why there is such a thing as prompt engineering. And this is things like setting the correct context before you ask the question, telling chat GPT a little bit about who you are and what you do. And a hack that I started using recently a lot, which I love, is I will set the context by saying, let's say I, I want to write a video script. And I say to ChatGPT, I am a online marketer and I want to write a video script for a new video I'm producing. And then I'll ask the question, I want you to ask me 10 questions that you need to know about my business in order to help write me a script that I'm about to ask you to write. That simple step will make sure that ChatGPT asks you the questions that it needs so that it can improve the output that it gives you. And this is what I mean about prompt engineering. When you get the hang of this, you're going to get a lot more productivity. So here's an example of, um, I put together a script for one of our clients, uh, just 
Simple as this, write me an engaging thought on one reach research script for a 15 minute YouTube video on the top five best neighborhoods to live in Napa County for residents over 50 years of age. And see what I'm doing is I'm niching down, right? You're not just going to everybody because you go to nobody. You niche down, you get something specific. The amazing thing about ChatGPT is you can pick the tone. You can pick the tone it writes in. And a lot of people miss this. They just, because by default, it's just going to give you this professional, confident tone. You can actually get it to write in the style of some of your favorite influencers, or maybe in the style of somebody you like to follow, or you can actually give it one of your own scripts and say, write it in this style. So it can even replicate scripts that you've used before and map your style. So make sure that you're thinking about tone in here as well. And it literally will put this out. It will give you the exact script. It will put in instructions of where you should come into the frame and where not. You'll need to play with it a little bit, but this will get you a lot further than if you're gonna try this yourself, okay? I've actually gone to the point now where I can go from an idea for a video to recording it in less than 10 minutes, right? Five minutes to put together the script, the next 10 minutes, I'm in front of the camera doing, put it into the teleprompter, record the video, and then put it out there. All right. I know I've thrown a lot at you and I'm coming to the end here. Um, I promise. So the last thing I'll show you with you, just five tips, five things that I want you to take away. So number one is get yourself into that gym, right? Uh, Carrie, I see a question. So do we literally just go to chatgpt.com? Yes, you do. And actually, you can get it on your mobile phone. So you can go and get the OpenAI app for ChatGPT um, and just put that on your phone. You can, uh, there's so many different ways you can get to it today. But yeah, I just go to OpenAI and I go open ChatGPT and you just start typing in there. They have a free version, which is 3.5, uh, version 3.5, which is perfectly good for most of you, to, for everybody to use. If you're doing more sophisticated stuff and you're really starting to get into it, they have a $20, $20 a month subscription, $25 a month subscription to jump up to the next level. But most people, I would say, you don't even need that, right? So coming back to this, five tips, get yourself to the video gym. The teleprompter, I can tell you, was a breakthrough for me. One of the hardest things I found with longer form content, and it became an obstacle, was just getting used to re like having to memorize the script, right? If I'm doing a 15 minute video or a 10 minute video, you can't, you're not going to memorize all of that. So there's two things you can do. One is to use a teleprompter. The other thing, and I would say hats off to Mike Sherrard again for, for sharing this, write down your key prompts. And all you need to do is put it down in front of you and you look at the camera, you record that bit, then you look down, you get your next prompt, you look back up, and then you record. And you just stay still straight to camera, and you will be able to edit those pieces out where you look down really, really easily. And if you have a video editor, and there's lots of them out there, I use a service called editvideo.io. I pay monthly. They have amazing editors. They do all my video editing. I just send it to them, drop it in a Google Drive. They take care of it for me. And it's, it's not even that expensive. And they just edit out the bits where I look down. Uh, if you have a video editor, you can even tell them, give them video, video editing instructions as you're going through. You just say, hey, listen, I, I, like, I prefer the previous take. Can you just take that bit out and then jump to this bit? And then you clap so that they know that it, they match up the audio with the video and you carry on, okay? So figuring out those types of hacks will make it a lot easier for you to increase your content production. Don't be afraid to let your personality shine through. I said this before, like you're building rapport, you're building trust, you're building authority. So if you have a bit of a quirky style or you like to crack jokes, do it on the video. And the other thing is you have to have high energy, right? You're going to feel probably a little over the top. Like I, this is maybe the Brit in me speaking here. So uh, we're very polite and reserved. So I feel ridiculous on camera some of the time. And it's just because I have to have so much energy to even get 10% of it, 20% of it out to the person who's watching. And you might think it feels ridiculous, but the other person is actually thinking, oh yeah, this is, this is kind of an engaging video. But if you just show up like you normally would in an in-person conversation and you're not bringing your full energy, 
people are going to feel like it's a little bit of a boring video, right? Because we all watch a lot of content these days. So bring the energy, even if it means that you have to do a shorter video and more takes, that's okay. Just bring the energy and make sure it's fine. And then the last two things I'll say here, I don't see people leveraging video in uh, their emails and their texts. If you're recording video, this is great content. You need to be putting it in your emails and your texts. Don't rely on the YouTube algorithm, right? Because it might take you a while to get ranked. So if you've done a video, even one, make sure everybody that you're working with knows about that video. Put it in your emails, put it in your signature, put it in your texts. And that way you're gonna get more traffic onto your YouTube channel that will help tell YouTube that your videos are worth watching. And then the last thing, I mentioned this before, keep that consistency. Don't expect immediate results, you won't get them. But if you keep at it, this can literally change your entire career. I'm not uh, pulling any punches, but I mean that sincerely. I've seen it happen time and time again. It can change your career. And with that, I hope it was helpful. <laughs> I know I threw a lot at you. Um, so I'll stop for, for any questions. I did just jump back in here. Hey, Dawn. Oh, go ahead. Who was asking a question? I think it was Carrie. Sorry. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Um, I was just asking a, a, again about editing a video and you said edit video.io is a $20 a month service. Uh, so it's edit video.io and no, that wasn't the $20 service. The $20 service was chat GPT's premium uh, version. You don't need that. I can promise you, you don't need that. If you're just getting started, just use chat GPT. Editvideo.io is, it's more expensive than that. If you're doing two videos a month, they do have a plan that I think is probably about $150 a month. Um, and they take care of the editing for two videos per month. If you do more, they have, they go up from there. I don't have any connection with them at all. I'm just, they've just been good for me. So that's one I'd recommend. You can also take a look on Fiverr and find a video editor on fiverr.com and they'll, Usually it's it's a bit more expensive than most people think. Like most people think that editing doesn't take long. It does, it's a lot of work. So for a 20 minute video, you can expect to pay, I would say anything between 150 to $250. So that's why I like these subscription services because then, you know, is if you it keep it holds you accountable as well. Because I know I'm paying $150 a month. I'm going to make sure that I actually start to record my video, right? Um, exactly. And most, yeah, it does help with accountability. So, I mean, if you were, I, that this is the part of video that is intimidating to me and probably others, is I feel like I'm, I just get that one take since I do the lives because I don't know how to edit. So would you need to, mm -hmm. how complicated is editing videos in general? I see everybody doing it. I mean, the process is, itself is actually not that complex. You can learn it. Uh, but what I would say is it takes a lot of time. And so even if you take, like, let's say we were to take this, um, this hour that we've re recorded here and I wanted to edit it and get it ready for, you know, YouTube or maybe put some captions on it as well that's it's going to take like maybe two three even four hours of my time to do that that's not my sweet spot it's not what i need to be doing so if you if you you know concerned about the cost to begin with and you want to try and get used to doing some ed editing you can there's a lot of great tools out there i will just tell you it'll probably take more than you long longer than you think and if you think about it like this every time you do that it's going to discourage you from wanting to do it again. Whereas if you've got somebody on Fiverr who just takes care of it, gets it up, and you can move on with your life, you're probably more likely to do more video again afterwards, right? Bernie, you had a question. Uh, besides putting video in email signature and text, where else do you use them? So I would say one thing that we've started doing quite consistently for clients who have video is we'll use it as a leave behind when we have a call so let's say we try and call and they're like, no, I'm not ready to speak to a realtor just yet. I'm just looking. And you say, no worries. Well, actually, we just recorded a video um, on the five best things, to us, top five neighborhoods or whatever it is. You can then set just that gives you a chance to actually drop them a link in the text. And they're more likely to go and watch it because you talked about it on the phone with them. And guess what? 
Now you're in front of them building rapport, even though they're not talking to you. And that will stay in their mind because a lot of everybody knows like a lot of it is just keeping top of mind, right? And showing value. So that's a, a good uh, kind of trick that we've been using. This has been great co content. I, I'm sorry, I have to go. So I bid you tootle yeah. pip and stuff and cheerio. <laughs> Toodaloo. Yeah. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Awesome.